The only way you can take CBS Sports Radio 1140 with you is with the Radio.com app. Download it today and listen to us anytime, anywhere. We've got your Raiders covered. Knock on wood if you're with me. It's silver and black today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. And now, here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Good Super Bowl Sunday morning, uh, Raider Nation. This is Scott Gobranson. This is the Silver and Black Today, our special, of course, Super Bowl edition, which means we're just here on Sunday every week, and it happens to be Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Right? That's right. Uh, but we want to uh, thank you guys for joining us here as we are here every week. Uh, and also to wish you, are you ready? And as I, as I get close to bringing in my co-host here, Palindrome Day. Whoa. Chaz, Chaz Osborne oh, uh, joins God. me as well. Do you know what that is, Chaz? Uh, I knew it when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> it's the first time in, what, 900 years we've 909 had years. That stuff is so stupid. That the, the, the date, 0202-2020, backwards is exactly the same. Mm. So if you're a better, maybe maybe that's a good sign. Today's the day. Maybe today's the day. I came to uh, Vegas on 777. What was that, about 15 years ago? I don't remember being lucky that day. Well, so the year seven. So you've been out here for 2013 years yep. <laughs> just before Bugsy built the place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now you're going way back. Oh. All right. Uh, the gentleman you just heard and saw, if you're streaming, by the way, if you're streaming our video on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch and Periscope, Mr. Kelly Kreiner joins us. Kelly, good morning to you, man. You uh, you feeling good this morning? We were out a little bit late last night for well, not, not for you, but for me, for the old I guys. Say, I, went, uh, actually, <laughs> for, I went home early. <laughs> for, for old guys like me, uh, we were we were out late, but uh, a fun time. We'll talk about that in a minute. But how you doing today, bud? All right, I'm good, man. Excited Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl Sunday, right? This yeah. is is this your is this like your Christmas, Kelly? For actually, for me, the NCAA tournament the first two days because there's just two, yeah. two days of wall to wall action. That's the best. Is a little better than Super Bowl, but I mean, it's dude, it's Super Bowl. It's I get Bowl. I get to bet large amounts of money on a coin toss. <laughs> yep. Yes, it's uh, if you're if, if if yeah, you can pretty much bet on everything, and we'll talk about that later. We're gonna get from Kelly some of his prop bets. If you didn't read his story with his recommendations, if several you, of which I did, I took. So if you didn't read my story, you probably saved yourself some money. <laughs> uh, but check it out, silverandblacktoday.com. That is our website, by the way, 24-7 Raider News. And, of course, we also bring in Mr. Chaz Osborne. Yeah. Chaz. Good you do, times. Yeah. yeah good, good times time last night, huh? Oh, man, it was, it was crazy. Raider party. Yes. Raiders and, are officially here. That little thing they did over at the stadium with Mark Davis, that was nothing. Last night made it official. It was uh, it was crazy uh, and uh, in a good way, but we will we'll talk about that because last night uh, our good friend John Viscara over at the Stage Door Casino, of course, a proud sponsor of this show. Uh, we did three shows from there uh, this year as well, live uh, from from the bar, which was fantastic. Um, uh, he had the black hole, the official black hole. They have an office here now in Las Vegas, by the way. So anybody who was worried about tradition. And things like that, and and uh, you know what's going to happen in Vegas isn't going to have a home field advantage, and they're not going to have a black hole, and all that 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 uncertainty. I think last night was a big kind of hump to get over. Yep. It doesn't seem like. Well, what do you mean? You guys were at a bar with Senor and Gorilla Rilla and the Violator and all this stuff. Why is that a big deal? But it is. Yeah. Right. And they said it too. The the guys themselves said it. They said, you know what? We were we were unsure how things would go. But man, the last few days being in Vegas, we know the Raiders are in good hands and the Raiders are going to a good spot. It, it felt like family. You know, that's that's the thing with the Raider fans. When everybody's walking in, it felt like a family reunion. Like, hey, everybody say, hey, have a long time to see you here. And that you know, being there last night, kind of it was kind of like being in the bowels of the, the Coliseum, you know, everybody squished in there screaming Raiders at the top of their lungs. And it, it just really, it, that, for me, that made it more official. Yeah, Kelly, I, mean, I don't know. Does, does the, the, the word bowel bother you this early in the Bowels. Morning? No. <laughs> but, I so mean, many it, meanings. It, it's Super Bowl weekend. So, I mean, yeah. every, everything's packed. Every bar's packed. Mm-hmm. Everything's like that. But it's like you're saying that vibe in there. I mean, it was, um, that's what you're going to see on game day. And like I said, they're not here yet. It's not a regular season game. They're not even playing. But that's the kind of atmosphere that you're going to see, right? And it's just going to grow. Mm-hmm. Well, and that to me was part of it as well because I had never really hung out with those guys clearly because I'm I, 
I didn't go hang out in the black hole uh, as a as a kid, obviously, and as an <laughs> adult, I was a Charger fan for a long time. But then uh, I had gone to Oakland before, but I didn't sit down there. But those guys were were fantastic, and like I said, they were they were really genuinely concerned of how things would go in Vegas. And I'm yep. not talking about their ticket situation. That's a whole different thing. But but talking to them last night and the reception that they received from people, because a lot of people from Las Vegas, a lot of Raider Nation from Las Vegas came out to the stage door last night because it is the home of Raider Nation in Las Vegas. They came out, uh, the Villanos guys, the club from here in town, they were all there. I mean, it was it was just, it was a blast. We saw Jerry Robinson, of course, yep. was there. Rod Martin was there. Uh, and so there was some alumni there, obviously, with the big Super Bowl party they're having over at the Westgate today uh, to watch the game. But but I, I just, I was excited. It was fun. And you could see, and I said this to Kelly, you had, you had already left, Chaz, but I said to Kelly, I said, man, imagine what this is going to be like on game day to your point, right? No. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be wild. Um, it's funny. Cause like, uh, John said last night, they were at capacity. They couldn't let anybody in until everybody left. It's like a nightclub at that point. Right? <laughs> you know, it's like, it was, it was packed. Yeah, it was just so, a good time. So I had to tell him the story about when I was in Chicago for the world series, I was talking to a buddy of mine who owns a bar and uh, the fire department went around to every bar in Wrigleyville and just started writing citations for o- overcrowding. Oh. They hit every single bar. So the next two days, they had to have somebody counting. Uh, I mean, right. you're, basically the city said, screw you guys. We don't care about this is something that hadn't happened in a hundred and some years. <laughs> yeah. We're getting money because we're a broke state and we need to steal everything we can from people. <laughs> No, but you know when the Raider when the when the games are being played, it's going to be like that here too, right? We're going to have our official spots to go to and all the Raider bars. And uh, oh, last sure. night was just a sample of what it's going to be like when they get here. It's great. Yeah, it was. And 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 for those of you, uh, again, if you didn't see it, go up on our Twitter handle. Twitter handle, blah blah. Silver black, the number two day. Also, uh, Kelly's, which is at rating the draft, and Chaz S B T Chaz C H A Z. Uh, and mine as well. You'll see the video, the pictures of all the stuff that we had up there, which was a blast. So if you missed it, um, uh, make sure you check it out. It was a good time. Uh, the other thing, guys, was this past week, uh, and we're going to talk next after the break about this, but um, we took a tour. Paul Ihander, our, our, our big boss man here, our program director at CBS Sports Radio, and I took a tour of the Allegiant Stadium. So we'll talk a little bit about that. If you haven't seen our exclusive video up on YouTube um, where we walk you through the stadium, make sure you go check that out on our YouTube channel. But um, as part of that, I also got to sit with Lincoln Kennedy because as part of the stadium, you know, they wanted fans to be able to do something uh, about it and be part of the stadium permanently. So they came up with this legacy brick program, which benefits the Raiders Foundation, and we were able to talk to Lincoln Kennedy about this program. We also got his Super Bowl pick. So let's um, go to our, our engineer, producer Trent Ogle, in, this, in the booth there. We're going to go to right now our conversation with Lincoln Kennedy. Welcome back to the Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio, we're joined by Raiders legend Lincoln Kennedy. Lincoln, we're here today right outside Allegiant Stadium to talk about a really cool program, a way for fans to become part of permanently the stadium. Talk about what the Raiders Foundation is doing with the Brick Program. Well, it's called the Legacy Brick Program, and it's an opportunity for sports fans to be a part of what is we're going to do with history, opening up Allegiant Stadium right here in Las Vegas. Uh, the, the move is official with the team name now known as the Las Vegas Raiders, but what better way to commemorate or pay a tribute to someone you love or a message or an idea, a philosophy that you can share forever in a brick and lay it outside of Allegiant Stadium. Uh, and the great thing about it is that all the proceeds that are raised by these programs are going back to the charities that support Nevada. You know that when the Raiders announced the name change, the Las Vegas Raiders, they put their money where their mouth is by donating $500,000 to the school uh, meals program, debt program. And there's also various entities and, tra- and, and charities that I've been involved with since, since the Raiders have made the transition to become the Las Vegas Raiders, We're giving back to the military and, and disabled veterans, as well as communities and schools and uh, sports programs throughout the state of Nevada. Well, and that's what, of course, the name officially changed, right? But the, the Raiders Foundation, and you and I have spoken several times, the Raiders Foundation has been active here in the community for about three years. Um, when people look at the Raiders moving to Las Vegas, coming here, come the fall, and they'll actually see it come to life, uh, talk about what an NFL team, and specifically the Raiders and their connection with the community, what that means to a community. 
Well, you know, you try to summarize and think about this. There's never been a city the size of Las Vegas uh, in America that doesn't have a professional sports franchise. It started with the Golden Knights, and now you've got the NFL. And the fact that Allegiant Stadium, which everybody in Las Vegas sees, whether they're driving one way or the other, you, you're thinking about what's it going to be like when it finally opens. You've seen the renderings. You've seen all the drones. You've seen the, the sort of computer hype and generated hype about it. But it's also a great thing, the fact that you're going to have NFL in your backyard. So whether you're a Raiders fan or any other team, one one day your team is going to play in the stadium and you're pro you're probably hopefully that you can be a part of it and see what it's like to be a part of be a part of something new because as you know everybody likes new stuff <laughs> absolutely now lincoln what is your brick going to say my brick is going to well, – if I tell you – no, I promise. No, actually, my brick is very – it's something that I've always said since I've been in this position as sort of an ambassador with the Raiders. It's one people, one love, one nation, Raider Nation. That's awesome. I appreciate the time. Now, one last thing I want to get uh, unrelated to the brick program, NFL draft coming here to Las Vegas. Of course, you are an accomplished broadcaster uh, doing work, both college and professional. How exciting of a time is that going to be, not only for Las Vegas, but for the Raiders organization to, to have the draft right next to their brand new facility? You know, what's interesting about that is that over the past couple of years, the draft has become more of a spectacle than I ever thought. And this is the land of entertainment right here. So uh, can you imagine a grander platform? And the fact is that ever since Philadelphia did a couple, such a great job with the draft a few years back, every city has been trying to outdo them. And so this is Las Vegas' opportunity, not only to put the fact that the Raiders are going to be there and they're going to be on the map, but it's an opportunity for Las Vegas to showcase what it can do to the world, especially with a platform like the NFL draft in this background. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Okay, Lincoln, one more hard question. 49ers or Chiefs? 49ers. 49ers? It's no not doubt. hard. No doubt. Defense wins. Okay. I'm an offensive player, but defense wins. <laughs> Lincoln Kennedy, thanks again. Thank you for having me. All right, there you have it. Lincoln Kennedy choosing, picking, I should say, the 49ers in the Super Bowl, but also talking about the Raiders Foundation um, uh, brick program. And Kelly, as we were listening to Lincoln tell us about that, uh, out of all of us so far, you're the only one who's jumped in on that, uh, and you got a brick. I did, and like I told you, it's like not only did I get the brick for the stadium, but man, they suckered me into the replica for the house. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm in eight fifty. Might as well go another buck and a quarter. They got some hard salesmen now, over there. Now they didn't get me on the case to put the brick. In, so <laughs> that's like, I mean, they got to draw the line yeah, somewhere. There's, I mean, there's a lot of great options on stuff like that. They're, between the you know the design of the bricks, the size of the brick, uh, like the big square one has the Raider logo on it. So I mean, it, they, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. But it's like, yeah, and it's like. I, I saw it and I was like, yeah, I'm doing this. Yep. It, you know, it's like, and it, the best part about it though, it, I did that like 48 hours after having a real conversation with somebody about how I need to stop blowing money on stuff. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but you know what though? You think about it though, you, blowing money, but it goes to the foundation and they actually, they've, for three years, they've been doing things in our community. So it, it mm -hmm. says on the website that it might be a tax deduction. Yeah. So I'm like, sweet, there you go. I'm going to try Got that. that going for you. That's we'll a double see, win. We'll see how that works out. That's a double <laughs> win. All right, we are going to step aside and pay some bills. When we come back, we're going to talk about our stadium tour, how that went, and also, are you going to be able to see scantily clad or nude women near the stadium anymore? There's some talk about getting rid of the strip clubs in the stadium district. You're listening to The Silver and Black Today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. the same game we are because he's one of the for his size and i've said this several this times pretty his skating loud. ability for his size is unbelievable he should yeah. not be able to skate nearly as well i'm not talking about speed i'm talking about edge work people because that's what separates the people on the nhl these days join us for the nightcap with Lindsay brown monday nights at six on cbs sports radio 1140 the law office of Michael A. Troiano is a proud supporter of all things Las Vegas, including its people. Specializing in legal representation for all criminal defense matters ranging from misdemeanors to the most serious felonies. Attorney Michael Troiano provides clients with the legal strategy and professional representation needed in court. If you or a loved one find yourself in a legal situation and need a tough defense on your side, Michael Troiano can help. Call now for a free consultation, 702-843-5500 or learn more at TroianoVegasLaw.com. Spilled your pina colada? Uh, Quick, the quicker picker-upper. 
Bounty picks up spills and messes quicker and is two times more absorbent than the leading ordinary brand. So you can get back to getting caught in the rain. Bounty, the quicker picker up. There's nothing like meeting face to face and there's nothing like Zoom to make that happen. Zoom lets you connect and do business across town or around the world. Zoom ties together all of your communication needs into one easy platform for video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, and your conference rooms. Connect easily from anywhere, your mobile phone, your laptop, or conference room. Zoom is how business gets done. Get your free account at zoom.com today. Meet happy with Zoom. Hey, this is Eric Allen. You're listening to Silver and Black today. All right. Thank you to Eric Allen for bringing us back in. Except for the people on video, I was slow with the audio finger. So you didn't hear the Eric Allen bumper rejoin, as we call it. Uh, You're listening to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140 in the home of Raider Nation, the capital of Raider Nation. And that is Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, you're joined Scott Branson, Kelly Kreiner, and Chaz Osborne here with you today. We're talking Raider football. We're also talking uh, about uh, this week we were fortunate enough to get a very exclusive uh, inside tour, guys, of the stadium. So Paul Eihander and I went up uh, and were able to tour the inside of the stadium. If you haven't seen our video, go check it out. Uh, not many have been able to shoot inside as much as we were able to. So check it out. Our YouTube channel, Silver and Black Today's YouTube channel. You can see the video there. It's been going nuts. Uh, a lot of people uh, all over the country taking a look at the video. But check it out. But uh, a beautiful, I mean, I you guys watch the video. Um, and yeah. I'll tell you what, being inside. Go ahead, Kelly. I was going to say, yeah, we watched the video because somebody wasn't invited on the tour. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> No, sir. Uh, but uh, you're going to get in there. Stop. I probably wouldn't win anyway. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was probably sleeping. Ke- or Kelly's something. like, I'm going to give him crap. But yeah. then at the end, I'm going to say, yeah. I yeah. Anyway. Oh, I, I would have went. But I'm just saying, I was probably working or doing something. <laughs> so, uh, but inside, guys, I have to tell you some of my thoughts about it was uh, I was impressed. On the outside, I see a lot of people. We also did a drone flight over it yesterday. You can see that video, too. But flying the drone around. And so people look at it and they say, that's not going to get done on time. Right. But you go inside and they're already working and you can see photos we put up on the on silver and dot com as well. You can see photos of drywall and cabinetry going in the suites. Mm-hmm. OK, so there's a lot of things happening. And when we were in there and the, the young woman who was a safety officer took us through who was these young people who are in these trades are amazing, by the way. Um, Young people. They were, yes. They were, she was like 26 years old. I was going to say he was probably 42. Yeah, stop. Like 20, 26. But anyway, so so we're in there, and um, uh, they said basically all the, infra- every, all the infrastructure's in. It's all done. Mm-hmm. You, know, you see these people doing videos and saying, oh, there's all this trouble, there's all this trouble. Yes, the roof issue is con- continuing ongoing, but they've made significant progress in the last two weeks. But overall, when you walk through, man, you could start to really feel it come together. We were over by the torch, the lanai doors, which are when you stand on that pedestal there that out that looks towards the strip Mm -hmm. through those doors, guys. Holy crap. It kind of sinks in and like you're okay. Now, this is a big game. Monday night, Sunday night football, Thursday night football. And those doors are open. Yeah. And you got the sparkly lights or even at kickoff on a Sunday and the sun's shining on the gold of the Mandalay Bay. It's going to be phenomenal. It was really, really cool. That's the one thing I, when they first said they were going to put that, I was trying to think about the sun just reflecting off of that, what your right. angle is going to be like. Because if you've ever driven in this town, you know, every once in a while, man, you hit an <laughs> angle at that sun that you ain't seeing anything. Yeah, It's a great point. I hate it during this because the way the sun sinks during the summer in the horizon, you know, it, it, you're, you're driving. At, if you at drive, 4 o'clock, you can't oh, drive east. You can't drive east. People or here, west, sorry. West, yeah. yes. People here can't drive anyway, but that's a different story. Uh, but, but no, it was phenomenal. I want to thank the Raiders, obviously, for having us in there um, and check it out. But the other thing, too, that was amazing to me, we went into the Raider locker room, which was just a big, dark room. They hadn't even really done much in there yet. Uh, but uh, the access, they showed us the access points from the locker room to where media rooms will be, to where um, the, the lounges will be. Up on the concourse outside, both the regular stand areas on all three levels and then also outside the suites are these amazing like gathering areas, which will be bars, of course, lounges and food. Uh, and, and the windows of the dome of the Legion Stadium, they look out west towards 
the mountains, right, towards Summerlin. Just amazing. It's going to be gorgeous. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, so so that's it. You can look at the video. I won't keep talking about it because it's a visual. You need to see it. Right. But the other thing, Kelly, and you talked about this before we went on the air, uh, there is now somewhat of a push started, and even though it was just kind of floated out in an article by our good friend Mick Akers in the, in the Review Journal, uh, that they might want to try to get rid of the gentlemen's clubs. What? In the stadiums district, which is, includes the Hustler Club, Larry Fence Hustler Club, and the Crazy Horse 3, which is right... I mean, when I say right down the street from the stadium, right down Russell Road, yeah. it's right... Like, it could be a tailgate lot, right? Yeah, you could see it, yeah. Um, so they they now are talking about, uh, and some of the county commissioners very gingerly had said, well, you know, we want to make sure the stadium district has the right feel for families and this and that, which, hey, I got a family. I totally understand that. But guys... Talk to me about your feelings about if they were to to force those businesses out, what would be your feeling on that, Kelly? I am a big proponent of the government staying out of pretty much everybody's business affairs, let alone I, mean, I don't care what kind of business it is as long as it's legal. Mm-hmm. And especially when you want to give me this crap about um, they want to keep it family friendly and everything <laughs> when just on the other side of the 15 is every freaking casino in this town, right. which that's not exactly the most family friendly thing around. <laughs> I mean, they they tried the family friendly thing back in the day, but you're just sitting here saying, oh, yeah, um, drinking, gambling, and everything's cool, but strip club bad. Right. I was like, you know, I, I want my I want my vote back to go against the stadium. You now. want the family thing. Go down to Circus Circus, right? You know, these, these, <laughs> Las Vegas was built. <laughs> that's, that's a night. That's, that's, a, a, that's a people man. watching platform. <laughs> best or well, best steakhouse in Vegas. Yes. Is still in still the Circus there. Circus. You, well, People don't believe me when I tell I, them that. Yeah, it's. It is. It's like you're walking into '70s Vegas. The yep. food's phenomenal. Now, since uh, you know the they got sold and everything, I'm hoping it stays the same because I mean it, it was it's iconic. Okay, it's enough right. food talk. Let's keep going. Okay, well, <laughs> Las Vegas was built on gambling and strip clubs and debauchery, and they call it Sin City for a reason, right? Those places were already there. Now, clean them up. I understand, but um, you can't just start pushing people around. Like, they were, how long have they been there? Decades. Uh, n- well, no, no uh, not really. Hustler's been there probably what four years? Yeah, five years, maybe even less than that. Well, I mean, I'm talking about like the finished thing because they had a small one up for a while before they were building that. So, I mean, it's probably, yeah, well, I'd say probably six years. Well, well, here's. But the- I mean, the other one's been some form of a strip club before it's crazy or something several times well but. here's the deal though there there are like, like you know you, Chaz, you say the city was made on that you know what i i there's strip clubs in every city right. some of the biggest most famous ones are in places <laughs> like atlanta i will say the jacksonville jaguars would have to move out of the city tampa correct <laughs> jacksonville is <laughs> a navy most town infamous yeah. ones are in tampa and they're right yes. next to the stadium right right so be, and that's because primarily until recently most stadiums have been in kind of industrial areas uh, or outskirts of urban areas, not in a place. So, so as as it as the area matures, now the only thing, and and again, I say, look, they're there, um, but clearly you can you can legislate them out by just basically changing zoning. There'll be lawsuits over, but I think eventually, I think it'll take a few years, but it's going to happen. I don't think the the Hustler Club, which is on the other side of of Dean Martin. Um, and down uh, further north uh, over the Hacienda Bridge, I don't think that'll be in trouble. I think it's the crazy horse because that's more right directly adjacent to the stadium. Mm -hmm. Um, And as developers come in and as the stadium succeeds, for those of you who don't think it will, it will, um, as that area starts to grow up and develop over time, you're going to people are going to want to put hotels they're going to put restaurants and the bottom line is they won't want to do it next to a strip club doesn't mean that people don't have the right to go to a strip club i'm with kelly i like the government staying out of everything Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time uh, i think eventually it's inevitable because the land values will go up the mix and the uses will change and you'll see some of them go by the wayside and here's why you said people wouldn't want to put a restaurant or something next to a strip club here's why that's stupid do you have any? <laughs> do you have any idea how much foot traffic the Crazy Horse Three gets? Any convention? Any? I mean, it, you, the space next to that place would be a high value, high value real estate because of all the traffic that it gets. 
if you put any kind of rat, because I mean, you can get food at strip clubs and stuff, but do you really want to ah, eat food at a strip club? Ah, <laughs> um, don't, don't start me. It, but here's oh, the, oh but, so you're a fan. I'm but sorry. here's the thing. But no, so but that so I mean that that's I I agree with what you're saying. People said they wouldn't do it, but that's dumb because the uh, if you know anything about real estate, the feet by your you know the square footage of your building is the second most important feet you need for a business. Yeah, but at the same time, tra- traffic's only one factor. Traffic is great. If it's the wrong traffic, then it's not great. So if you're if uh, you're people s- throwing large amounts of money around when they're but in Kelly, town, but Kelly, uh, if you put anything next to a strip club, it will survive. OK, so One, why aren't Starbucks next to strip clubs? Because 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 you don't have any corner lot and you don't have any place for it in a strip club. Look where all the strip clubs are in town. It, you know, you don't have a corner oh. spot. What's the name of the uh, Mexican restaurant right next to Sapphire? That's one of the best Mexican restaurants in town. You can't get in the door of that place. I don't even know. I didn't know there was a Mexican restaurant near Sapphire. Yeah, it's, well, yeah uh, it's, which is rumored to be going out of business, by the way. Well, it's going to be a parking lot, from what I've been is that what it is? told. Uh, yeah. See, now you're up to date on strip clubs in Las Vegas. Yeah. I thought Chaz would have given us that update. Man, I forgot about him. Chaz, Chaz just knows the the <laughs> he's cover domesticated. Charge. He doesn't have to pay anymore because <laughs> yeah. he's a local now. That's right. He doesn't, <laughs> right. Have, to, he doesn't have to. Oh my gosh, guys, we I can't believe it's been half hour through this first part of the show but we've we've covered the stadium with card strip clubs uh, by the way the roof progress if you look at our drone video those cables in just over two weeks have completely gone up now that's only part of the system and they still got a couple months of work to do on it but they've made big big progress so clearly they're they're um they're prioritizing it which is good news because that's the that's the really the one thing that i think you want to be concerned about if you're if you're concerned about the stadium com- getting complete on time which Again, they keep telling us that there's not going to be any problem. I believe it because time is money and money is time. So, so I think that they, uh, they'll get that done. But, but interesting stuff. Take a look at the video and tell me what you think. Uh, both videos will, will walk you through that. All right, um, guys, when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit about the rumor that won't die. What? Right? And I made a bet, and I'll tell you about my bet on this. Tom Brady to the Raiders? Whoa. Really? Really? Come on. Really? Forget about it. All right. We're going to talk about that when we come back on Las Vegas' only All Raiders show. And we started it two years ago, folks. We weren't waiting until they move here. Everybody's going to get on the bandwagon now. We've been here. We're here for you for Raider Nation. We'll be back right after this. way to take silver and black today with you is with the radio.com app download it today and search cbs sports radio 1140 in las vegas and listen to us anytime 
anywhere. Oh, yeah, we roll on here on the Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio, 1140 in Las Vegas. Nevada. Not Nevada. Nevada. Potato, tomato. No, I hate it. It is <laughs> Nevada. It's a hard A, not a soft A. They? Nevada. Who cares? I care. Canadians. Some of us care, Kelly. <laughs> About? All right, Tom Brady's coming to Vegas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, I'm Tom not Brady's done. What are you interrupting to me? Nevada? I'm not done. <laughs> Kelly, some of us care. <laughs> Tom Brady's coming to Nevada. Well, that, that makes one of us. <laughs> That's not true. People who people who are proud Nevadans don't like to pronounce it. Anyway. Wow, way to destroy the momentum of the show. Momentum of the show? You, you destroyed it by saying no one cares. I'm bringing life to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump in on this rumor. It's been out there. I think it's a bunch of bunk. Tom Brady's not going to be a Raider, folks. I don't care if he bought a house. We have sources. Sources say. Sources say. That he bought a house here. Others have said, no, there's no record of him buying a house. Well, I can buy a house under a different name and a different company and a shell. It doesn't matter. You're not going to know it. We have on good authority from somebody that, that, yes, he did buy a house. And then I heard from other people who are in the journalistic enterprise that, no, he hasn't bought a house. And they talked to a bunch of real estate people. And then our own, our good friend, John Viscar, we saw last night. I have a bet now on a box of cigars. Whoa. He a, says. A box of cigars? A wow. box. That's how, that no, that. Kelly, that's how certain I am. Well, no, I thought it was just a cigar. I thought it was just a oh, cigar. Oh, like we were telling you last we, night. Yeah, yeah, last night we were talking. I thought it was just a cigar. Yeah, up in the ante. Nice. No, it's a box of cigars. He says he will be the quarterback under center when the Raiders take to the field in Las Vegas for the first time. I said, no, sir. Wow. What say you, Chaz Osborne? Well, I kind of wanted to switch the conversation. I I, I don't think he's going to come. Back to strip clubs? Yeah. I wanted <laughs> to get back to the strip club <laughs> conversation because that was way more intriguing. No, I just I want to ask you guys. Do, do the Patriots kind of – do they owe it to Tom Brady to re-sign him? You know, like I know Bilicek wanted to keep Garoppolo, and that was kind of his plan. And, and um, you know, when I was with the Lakers, they, they really struggled, like, with the, the re-signing of Kobe. Like, do you, do you kind of – it's a difficult compromise. Do you, um, you keep him and it's kind of a thank you for everything you've done, but does that kind of stymie the rebuild? It's a little different in, in, uh, in NFL. But do you do, do, do the it's Patriots owe it to Tom Brady to re-sign him? Or? It's a great question. And I think Kelly and I will agree on this. What do you think, Kelly? The Patriots don't owe him anything. That's like the Lakers didn't owe Kobe anything. Right. Because they've paid him X amount of dollars for what he's done and everything. Right. And it's like Brady's like, oh, he took a team deal, took a team deal. That's on Brady. That's not on the Patriots. Right. You know? the. It, like players don't owe fans anything, teams don't owe players anything. But do the players fans don't, just totally players revolt? don't own or players don't owe organizations anything? Of course. This is all we all make our choice on what we have here. This is all everybody's in on this at the same. Nobody owes anybody anything, but and they, I hate when the, I hear stuff like. Are the that. fans out in front of the stadium with pitchforks and tiki torches if they let Brady go without resigning him? I mean that's. I, I understand. No, there's both sides of the argument. That's why I'm asking yeah. you guys. Like, it's really a tough compromise. What, what do you do? If you run your team by what the fans want, you're the Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's true. No, I mean, no truer words. I thought it was spoken. kind of a win-win re-signing Kobe because now you're giving the fans two more years of seeing Kobe. You got to see that final game, the 60-point game. You got to see, you know, you kind of everybody, all the fans got to come finally see him like a thank you and and um, this last final stretch of the two years. Meanwhile, you're rebuilding because you're, you know, you're losing games. You're at the bottom of the list. So you're stockpiling young talent. You're acquiring assets. And I know it's a little different, you know, basketball, five guys as compared to football. 11 guys but yeah but you can still do that with brady you're going to lose some games the fans get to come everybody you know there's the fans the outskirt fans that aren't really hardcore fans that kind of hey i got to see Bra tom brady play and and you know i it's really a tough tough difficult uh, for me i can see both sides of it and i you know which way do you go financially speaking for the lakers signing kobe bryant was a no-brainer because you have to be the th when you're the lakers you have to be the thing in la so right. you have to sell out. You have to have the stars. But also, they had people paying five thousand dollars for rattlesnake skin hats on the last game of. The, I mean, Those financial awesome. financially speaking, that was a no brainer. <laughs> awesome, but not but, really and because, because, like you said, it is only five guys on there, so you can kind of do that on a football on a football team. It's totally different. They could get you know? Tom Brady snakeskin hats. 
that <laughs> in Boston. Could you, could you those imagine? Could spot, you imagine that, that crap? Were they those? Were, but 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 here's the thing, guys. Listen, listen. So so you're right. I think there's 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 things on both sides of it. And if I'm the Raiders coming to the new market, the new stadium, the new everything, yeah, it would make a big splash. But at the end of the day, if you're a Raiders fan. Don't no. you want to win? Yeah, no, like, the Raiders. Are- like we spent all that time last night with those guys, you know, Violet. All those guys were awesome, and yep. I'm glad they're going to be here. But at the end of the day, I think the thing that most people and 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 being an outside observer, and if you want to get mad at me for this, then then do it. I I I'm, I, I don't care. Uh, but but here's the deal: for all these years, the Raiders have been this bad. All right, no playoffs, no championships. Right. Do you really care that much about that? About making a splash? Now, as a business, I get it. Do you care about all the other extraneous crap, or do you want to win? No. So is Tom Brady going to give you a better chance to win now versus you keep Carr and you get a younger Real quarterback Raider or fan. whatever you do? Real Raider fans don't need Tom Brady to make a splash coming to Vegas. You've already got Josh Jacobs. you got Max Crosby, Abrams. We don't no, know but do the know. Raiders, not the fans. The, the, the Raiders themselves. The Raiders don't need it. We've already got well, stars. We've got young stars. We've already got enough Cache moving to Cache. Las Vegas. I was going to say, yeah, the fact the Raiders are moving to Las Vegas is all the star thing you need. You're right. Just but, the name is enough. But And I think, Chaz, go ahead, Kelly. I was going to say, uh, well, I, I mentioned to you last night that I was going to write like a pro and con column on, or pro column piece on Tom Brady coming here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm probably not going to do that now, so I'll just kind of go over <laughs> here. Uh, well, I mean, like, I'm going to save myself writing it and just give it to you guys well, now. Hold up, is that like, since it's actually coming? Thanks over for here. the website traffic yeah. boost. Yeah. I mean, I can save it for the website. <laughs> no, go, it's all I'll good. Grab some coffee. No, it's all good. But, it's all good. But if you think about it, I mean, Tom, yeah, Tom Brady, man, he's getting up there in age and everything. But Gruden's going to trust him more in his offense than he's ever going to trust Carr. Might open the offense up a little more. The offensive line in in Las Vegas is better than he had at the Patriots. The running game is better than we ha- than he had in the Patriots. The wide receivers are better than he had at the Patriots. Mm-hmm. You know, the tight end, which he's accustomed to, Waller's better than anybody he's got there right now. So the I, I think you could improve the offense, but you have to realize it's a two-year window at best. Okay, but let me light this fire because I'm getting inundated with messages both on my phone from from fans and listeners and all that. It, would Tom Brady take the Raiders where they're at now? Now, we don't know the draft. We know free agency. It's very, very early, right? We're making a lot of assumptions. Right. Would Tom Brady in 2020 make this team, make the Raiders a much better team, much better chance of making the playoffs and winning a championship, hey, just saying it, right. uh, than Derek Carr? At this point in Tom Brady's career, Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback. You have to say it. He's got six rings. Okay. Right. But I'm just saying, at this point in his career, where he's at at 43 years old, it would he give them the best opportunity out of all available quarterbacks, including Derek Carr, for the Raiders to make the playoffs and maybe even win a couple games, go deeper in the playoffs? If Tom Brady's the Raiders quarterback last year, they're in the playoffs. Okay. And I think that's just what you okay. have to look at right now. Okay. That's a strong statement, yeah. So making the playoffs. Just pure – I mean, it doesn't matter if you, you win or you, not, just getting you, in. No, well, no, you have – but the thing is you have to get in to win it. Yeah, once, no, you do. Once right, you right, get right. in there, I mean, you have to make the playoffs. Right. And, I, you know, if Tom Brady was a Raider last year, they're in the playoffs. That's a strong statement. I don't know. His um, his accuracy on his deep ball just didn't look the same last but year. I feel Raiders, like his – Raiders skill, don't throw deep, so that works well, right into it. Neither did the Patriots because – Neither one of them had a deep threat. No, no, that's what I'm saying, though, but that's what works into this offense. He doesn't have to throw deep in the Raiders' offense. Yeah, of course. No, we're going to talk about these tight ends in the Super Bowl today because that's kind of the bigger part of the offenses nowadays. But I just feel like Tom Brady's, you know, to answer your question you asked originally, I I wouldn't want Tom Brady here. I I feel like he's just on the decline. He's going the wrong way. I, I would welcome any player with six championships on my team. If he's the 53rd guy on the bench, that's fine. I'll take him because of the knowledge, because of the veteran leadership that he would bring to that. Um, but for him to be the the main focus, the focal point of the the offense, I just don't see Tom Brady being that going you know, forward. You know what's amazing about uh, very well said. The, what's amazing about the Brady conversation, if if we want to call it that, if there should even be one, it's all speculation, is that it it actually just takes the car argument and basically puts it on to another level. Because the people who are not in favor of Derek Carr being the quarterback of the Raiders mm-hmm. jump on it. I had one of our listeners say Carr already plays like he's fifty-five. <laughs> we had an eleven and five team last year that was three and thirteen because of the quarterback. Or three no, eleven and five team with a three and thirteen quarterback. Ooh. 
So, so, so I, I get it, and that's my man Ed. But th- you know, here's the thing: I, I get the passion on both sides and all that stuff, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I just, I mean, I think you said it best last night, Kelly. You said I don't think it's going to happen, but I could see it happening. I mean, yeah, it won't surprise me one bit. Like I don't think he's going to be here, right. but it won't surprise me one bit if he is. Yeah, no. But absolutely. it's also sources have told me that he also bought a house in Connecticut, so maybe. He's just buying a lot of houses because that's what <laughs> rich people do. He's just being a property mogul. Even with losing, the Raider fan base has grown every year. So I don't think they need to worry about having some kind of a Tom Brady face of the franchise moving forward. Well, after the break, in a couple minutes here, we're going to we're gonna talk to Raider Cody. Cody is uh, a fan, podcaster, very well-known, fast-growing, also has a YouTube channel. We're going to talk to him, too, about this because the state of the Raider Nation, the fandom, is very interesting to me. For somebody who came from outside of it, right, until until I started the website and started covering the Raiders since they were coming to Las Vegas, um, I was not involved in Raider Nation, only through Chaz uh, giving me crap as a kid. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's very interesting to see, though, with the changes coming with the franchise, how I'm seeing a, a percentage, not a huge percentage, but there is a, a sizable percentage of the fan base who resents change and almost resents wanting to get better and become a a stellar franchise versus what it's been because they're so used to it. It's sort of Kelly, you're a Cubs fan, so you went through that for many many years until they got good. Their ownership changed. They they got the right people in place and they started to win. So it'll be interesting like that. And I've always said, you know, people people have have said to me too, oh, well, you you're a Charger fan, you're covering the Raiders. Who are you? And they post pictures of me when I was younger with Charger jerseys on and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um. And I said, well, listen, it's, it's like religion, all right? If, if somebody finds religion at some point, do you say, well, no, you found it later in life, so you're not a valid religious person? No. Actually, most people will do that. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, if, somebody's, if somebody jumps on the quote-unquote bandwagon, because I see a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, now we're going to have this nice new stadium, we're going to have all this, we're going to get good, and then all these, these, these bandwagon. And I'm not a bandwagon guy. I hate bandwagon fans. I've seen a lot of Chiefs license plate frames in Las Vegas over the last two weeks. Right. That'll tell you. But Sparkling at the, brand new. Right. But at the same time, people are investing in tickets. If they're investing in gear and they're going out and they're in Las Vegas, too, in the new home, It doesn't bother me as much, but anyway. All right, when we come back from this break, folks, we're going to be joined by Raider Cody. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Raider Nation and those fans, what kind of he hears because he is um, a Raider fan long time and and hears a lot from folks. So we'll talk to Raider Cody right after the break. You're listening to The Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140.
CBS Sports Radio 1140. Welcome back to the Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio in Las Vegas, Nevada. Home of Raider Nation, that's right. Nevada. No- oh, you bad. Oh, no. you bad. I almost said the word. I almost got myself suspended <laughs> off the radio. We'll um, get you. No, we, we are not going to say Nevada. We're going to say Nevada. And I know our next guest, as we go out on the attorney Michael Troiano newsmaker line, we bring in our good friend Raider Cody. And Cody, I know you're not going to say Nevada, right, buddy? No, it's Nevada, man. Even over here in California, Nevada all the way. <laughs> there you go. See, now there you go. You know he's intelligent. All right. So, Cody, I want to jump in. And, you know, you your, um, your story, uh, you know, starting a podcast – uh, as a big Raider fan, you've you've really had a lot of success uh, and grown very very quickly. So congratulations on that. We started as a podcast as well, and so we we understand the journey and the hard work it takes to do it as an independent guy. So congratulations on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's jump in and talk about kind of the state of Raider Nation. We you know, as as you saw from last night, we were with a lot of the folks from the Black Hole. The Black Hole's officially set up an office here in Las Vegas, the organization, so they're going to be coming out in force, as you know. Uh, You got an event that you're doing around the draft. They have an event uh, out today for the Super Bowl. But, you know, the move now is basically sort of complete. You know, they are the Las Vegas Raiders. For fans in the Bay Area, though, those that are upset that they left, I get it. It's, it they may some of them will never get over it, and that's okay. I don't I don't fault them for that at all. Yep. Uh, and some are kind of coming to grips with it, and then some are now really embracing it. What's your view thus far? Now that that season's over, 2019, and we're going into 2020. What's your kind of beat on Raider Nation and where they're at finally with the Las Vegas move? Well, I guess I could start with myself because I was you know, pretty plugged in over there in Oakland. I really enjoyed going to the Coliseum for games. And going back to, you know, I guess, where the whole planning started of where are we going to play, if, you know, we're here in San Antonio, you're kind of here in Vegas a little bit. Can we stay in Oakland? I was on the stay in Oakland bandwagon, I guess you could say. I want to, you know, I still have a sign in my garage. I wanted them to stay in Oakland. But once the move was announced to Vegas, I was like, okay, you know, hey, that's what we're going to do. Um, I already told myself, no matter what happens, I'm a fan of the Raiders. I'm not a fan of the Oakland Raiders. I was actually, you know, kind of born into being a fan of the Los Angeles Raiders for my dad. So for me, and I think most of Raider Nation, they kind of had the same mentality. Now, leaving Oakland, I know that there's a lot of fans just like me that had a lot of ties to that Coliseum. Um, and, of course, the fan base and, you know, the culture that has grown around it, all the different tailgating, all the different atmospheres that have, you know, just developed over the years. But after leaving that final game, you know, for me personally, I was down in the black hole myself. You know, I was right next to our good buddy that you talked to a lot last night, Gorilla Rilla. And, you know, it, it was just a little heartbreaking to be down there and have guys like Cleveland Farrell down there at the end of the game, ripping his jersey off to throw it into the crowd. And you're feeling beer getting sprayed over the top of you. And it's just like, man, now, you know, maybe there's, you know, some really aggravated fans. I don't think. I could probably guarantee you most of those fans, if, if a fan threw a beer at that game, I, I can guarantee they're probably not traveling to Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> so it, it kind of feels good to, I guess, get a little breath of fresh air, you know, quote unquote, from um, our quarterback. So it's one of those things that most of the fan base, I, uh, I mean, if not all of the fan base is still following their team. I'm sure there's still, you know, a few families that live pretty close to the Coliseum that are a little upset. But hey, you know what? Uh, majority is here. I think Las Vegas is welcome. Welcome us in. No problem. So uh, we're ready for it. Yeah. Again, we're on the attorney Michael Trail on a newsmaker line with Raider Cody. You can follow him on Twitter at Raider Cody. Also check out his YouTube channel uh, as he's got great content on both, uh, including his podcast. Um, but uh, Cody, here's the deal, though. I think I think you're right. I think that you know there's always going to be. I, I grew up in San Diego, right? I have friends and family grew up Charger fans forever since the '60s. And and they they really uh, a lot of them are just done and I get it I don't I don't fault them at all I, that's where I got to back in 2014 for me as a football fan um, but at the same time the one thing that has been different for me when I look at this and I'd love to hear your perspective on it is uh, when the Chargers moved to L A and they were going to move to L A. Um, not a lot of people in San Diego got mad at L.A. They were they were more mad at the ownership, which I totally understand. Uh, and with the with the Oakland to Vegas thing, I, I, I sense it's 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 weaned off a lot more. We don't hear it as much. But there was a lot of like anger and hate and ugly things said about Las Vegas. And I know that's because they were losing their team. Do you think that's subsided as well? 
hey, look, we as a fan base sometimes struggle pointing the finger at the wrong person here. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, we see it with players, we see it with everything. But when it came to Vegas, you can never blame Vegas for that. But I, I do, uh, you know, I've seen what you're talking about. And it's unfortunate, but at the same time, I mean, that's going to be the place that holds our team. And the way I see it, I mean, if you're going to get mad at Vegas for a city that, in my opinion, has already taken better care of our team than I've seen from Oakland in a long time, you know, from the city themselves or from actually, you know, um, I guess the people around it, then I don't know what to really tell you. There's really nothing. I'm glad it's died off because especially just these last maybe, at least since the final game, um, I think finally, finally, this fan base is fully embraced. Vegas. Ready, I mean, ready to move play, forward. You see that shiny new stadium? It's like, <laughs> yeah. How do you how can you get mad at that? Yep. Hey, Cody, it's Chaz. I got to tell you, I love your work, man. You do a good, uh, great job on the podcast. Um, let, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the team. Um, you know, going forward, I feel like you know we're we're heading in the right direction. Uh, the Raiders. Um, what do you see as far as free agency and, and the draft and and uh, you know, the glaring needs that, that the Raiders need to take care of to, to get this thing over the top and, and get that playoff push and, and beyond? Well, first things first, free agency coming up. Um, you know, we're borderline top 10 in cap space. What are we like? I think maybe the 11th. We have the 11th most most cap space right. going into the off season, um, depending on how accurate those numbers are, of course. But, I mean, we don't really have a situation like we were looking at even last year the year before. You look at your cap space and you also think about, okay, but what players are we going to have to resign immediately? Because that's going to be counting against that cap. Well, we've kind of already, for the most part, you know, we kind of locked up incognito. We locked up good. We might be maybe trying to bring back a guy like Deion Jordan or a guy like Daryl Worley, Carl Joseph, stuff like that. Um, but we really don't have any players that are sitting around. Most of our stars are one year into their rookie contract. Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion, we got some money to spend. So, last year, I felt like we kind of had this idea of, not spend. And I don't want to say we did spend. I mean, we kind of, you know, we went after Trent Brown pretty hard, uh, but you look at contracts like LaMarcus Joyner and Tyrell Williams, it wasn't, it was, those weren't breaking the bank contracts. So I think we were pretty conservative when it came to free agency this year. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, make a splash at, um, uh, there's, there's a couple, you know, linebackers that are out there showbird on the market. Um, you see guys like Joku, uh, defensive end. I'm not sure that he's a guy that we'd necessarily want to bring in. Um, but there's wide receivers out there, A.J. Green. There, there's a lot of different available free agents that I think um, if Mike Mayock and John Gruden, and I'm finally confident that I can say this, you know, it's been, there's been so many years. I, I noticed you made the comment earlier, Scott, that, you know, we, we've been in dysfunction, it feels like, for so many years, uh, losing season after losing season. It feels weird after only one year with this front office, Mike Mayock and John Gruden, that I can sit here confidently and say, I trust them. Right. Make these right well, decisions. And, and, and Cody, you know, you've been you've been very, very public uh, of, of your, your belief that, um, you know, that Derek Carr is the quarterback for the, the club and he is the starter as as of right now. And I said he's going to start here, too. We only got a minute left. But why is it? Why is Derek such a polarizing figure amongst Raider Nation when the team's got a lot of other problems? There's a lot of things the team needs to fix. But why do you think with the minute we have left? Why do you think it's become such a polarizing subject for for Raider Nation? I think it's just the effort that he gives to our actual team. Uh, there's a lot of times, you know, we bring in star power. We've seen this now. Um, Randy Moss. The paper, because we're going to lay it on you straight up. Everybody wants to know how much a loan from Dollar Loan Center really costs. And it's way less than most people think. Vegas, Reno, Carson City, Pahrump, Laughlin, Fernley, the deal.
We've got your Raiders covered. Knock on wood if you're with me. It's Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio 1140. And now, here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Welcome back to the Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Heard all over the country because Raider Nation is nationwide. It's worldwide. You can hear us on the radio.com app. Listen, folks, if you don't have the app, it's free. Free, right? And you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. Take us on the road with you. Also, the rewind function. So for 24 hours, it's like a, it's like a, a, a DVR. You can go back and listen to the show anytime you want. Of course, we also put the show up wherever you get your podcast. We were last night stage door, and one of our listeners was there, and he's like, hey, I know you guys. I, I listen to you on Spotify. And I said, yes, you do. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can listen to us on iTunes. You can listen to us on Stitcher. Google Play. Stitcher. Stitcher. That's right. Because you're, you're a big podcast guy, Kelly, so you know Stitcher. Most people who are really into podcasts – uh, use Stitcher and some of the other ones. But, yeah, you can get there. SoundCloud, you name it, we're there. So make sure you check it out as well. Get, uh, big thanks to Raider Cody there. We got cut off. Top of the hour is a hard stop. The computer kicks in. We had to cut him off. Uh, but appreciate him being on and, yep. and really voicing, I think, uh, at least uh, what m- a lot of the fan base thinks. Yeah, he brought about up a lot of great points. Um, you know, the fan base over in Oakland, I, I got a dozen Raider friends over in Oakland. And, you know, half of them are like, like he was said, you know, That's the guys more friends than you the have here. Yeah, it's true. And, <laughs> By about know, a dozen. They're, they're, uh, <laughs> they're done with the Raiders. They're saying they're not going to. And then the other half are like, hey, this is a great reason to go to Vegas eight times a year, play off some more. You know, so you can really see the divide. <laughs> no, I just like how it's always eight, not ten, because nobody's going to them preseason games. <laughs> we got to add playoffs, hopefully. Yeah, well, no, the preseason games, I bet you people do go to just because well, they're going to be cheaper. I was going to say, that's the thing. You'll have a lot of locals that go. And that was like when I had my Colts season tickets back in Indiana, I would take my preseason tickets, put them on the little in the break room in the office. Mm-hmm. I just hang them up there. And half the time, no one would take them. Ouch. But I, I think that first game, everybody's going to want to be a part of the very no, first no, yeah. game in Oak, you know, Las Vegas. The NFL will probably move it somewhere. You mean <laughs> yeah. that, that first game where Tom Brady comes out from the tunnel? Whoa. No. Come on. Did we, we get breaking Are we news? playing the Patriots in the first preseason? Yeah, there game? you go. See, that's what I like. Possibly. He's not, he's not going to be a Raider, guys. Just relax. All right, guys, we're going to jump in now. Of course, it's Super Bowl Sunday. If someone hasn't told you that, what? or if you don't know that, you might want to check your head. Um, but it is Super Bowl Sunday, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the game. The be- we're going to start with betting because this is Las Vegas. And not only that, for Raider Nation, Raider Nation hates both teams. We heard that a lot last night at the yeah. stage door casino. Uh, fans are like, man, I, I don't care. I hope they both lose. <laughs> you know, so so betting, if you're a Raiders fan, betting's a good thing because at least you can bet on different angles of the game. And so what we want to do with, with, with Kelly, Chaz does a lot of betting, but Kelly is the king of betting. He's also the king of the draft here with our show. So we want to talk to him a bit about that and, and get a sense for things. And, and what we want to do, I told Kelly in preparation for the show, I said, listen, um, you know, for you and Chaz and me to a lesser degree, because I'm not as as savvy as you and Chaz are with betting. But but for me, the, the, a lot of people send me notes and say, hey, I love when Kelly talks about betting, but I don't always understand what he says. And I said, well, that's because he usually has marbles in his mouth. Uh, well, no. say, that's because I slur my words this <laughs> early in the morning. That's totally understandable. But really, it comes down to terminology and kind of what is betting. So we want to do a little betting one on one. And you're saying to yourself, well, geez. I got to get my. You got time. It's only nine in the morning. You, the the kickoff's not till three something. There's already a three hour line at every sports book in, in Vegas. Town. The best right. piece of advice I can give anybody if they want to bet on the Super Bowl is bet it on Saturday. Yep. There you, you go. You might not get the best of the line. Something might move a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, it. The sports books are just a madhouse at this point. And if you live in Vegas and you want to bet at all, get an app. Yes. You know, get one of the sports. That's all. Apps. I don't go in the you sports can, book. Yeah. Anymore. I was gonna say you can keep you know 20 bucks in there or whatever keep it active i <laughs> it's it's priceless because yeah like literally like if you walk into the westgate south point caesars anything like that right now there's already a massive line of people trying to put it, in bets it's funny i say that and then i look over at chaz with like eight thousand pieces of paper and tickets and all that stuff so clearly chaz isn't on board with the uh no i did i the, made a bunch of app. bets yesterday and i've got my app up I got them both going. <laughs> you're multi. You're multitasking. Yeah. I like that. But uh, but but Kelly, the the thing the thing is w- with the betting now. Like you said, if you're if you're in Vegas, the lines are already long, uh, and so your advice doesn't really help because it's too late. But other than that, <laughs> for next year it helps. Uh, but for those people who are out of state and maybe there's sports books in their states that have them, 
are are not as crowded. Or if you call Vito on the phone and Vito's the guy who takes your bet, oh. uh, we want to just help you out a little bit because I got a lot of feedback to say, look, I just don't get it. So let's start with some things. For example, I'm going to assume that most people know things like the line, the money line, the spread. Those are pretty simple stuff. Even if you're not a better and you've only bet a couple times in your life, you kind of know that. So we'll skip that stuff. And let's jump into some of the other things. Kelly, when somebody says you're giving, you, there's juice, talk about juice. And I don't, it's not Kool-Aid, I know. Yeah, basically juice is um, like you're, you're basically almost all your bets, especially when you do um, spread bets, it's going to be uh, minus 110. Which like a tax. You, you, bet, you have to bet $11 to win 10. Right. That's basically, uh, that's going to be what the juice is. And basically that's just the casino that's like the closer they get even money on both sides are basically just collecting that money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like Trey said, it's basically like a little tax. You know, if you win your bet, you get all that back. But if you, you know, say they've got two bets on each side, they're just collecting that juice. Yeah. So that's, you know, they're getting that in there. Um, it's going to vary depending on, you know, certain things you make, especially with money lines. You know, it's always going to change on your money line. Um, sometimes instead of moving a line, they'll move the juice. So I know that uh, last night, instead of going to minus two, the win went to minus one twenty or one and a half minus one twenty because they didn't want to be the first person in town to go to two. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you so instead that was, of it was minus the, it was minus so it's it was, it's 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 bet one hundred and twenty to win a hundred. Yeah, uh, and that's usually one ten. Yeah, right. it's usually to be one ten. Right. But instead, if they don't want to move a line, they'll move the juice to try to get some more money on the other side. Because uh, casinos won't want to be the first one to get certain numbers because then they're going to get buried with action. Right. Um, yeah, but that's the biggest thing to know on the juice. It's just basically it's the, the price you're paying for the business to right. go to. So you to. bet 100 bucks and you win, you get back 190 So you're kind of giving that $10 on the minus one. 90 90 actually. Yeah. 90 90 yeah. yeah. So that it's okay. So there you go. There's juice because I had a question about juice. The other thing, VIG, right? VIG. Basically, same, same thing. thing. Right. Yeah. So, so we kill two birds with one stone there. Now, when well, the other question I got, which is a really interesting one, because we have talked about it several times during the course of the season, and I had a, a, a guy named Jay who, who, who listens to the show a lot and DM'd me on Twitter the other day. He said, hey, I've heard Kelly talk about, like, he bets one way on a game, and then as the game progresses, he says, hey, I want to, uh, I want to hedge my bet. So let's say today you take the 49ers – um, and they're, they're plus one, let's say, plus one and a half, depending where you get it, right? Um, and you, you bet them, and then all of a sudden, the game goes one way. Talk about hedging a bet and why you do it and how you do it. More often than not, if, well, first off, I have a friend who says hedging's for landscapers. <laughs> so I'll put that out there. I love that line. Um, more often than not, if you're hedging a bet, you've got like a futures bet right. or like a parlay to where you've got, like on a futures bet, you'll have say like I have the Chiefs and I think it's eight to one to win the Super Bowl, so I'm gonna hedge and bet some money on the 49ers. Basically, you're guaranteeing you're winning some you're winning money something. either way. Yeah, and whenever you're doing a hedge, you have to decide how much. Like say if um you've got a hundred dollars at five to one, you know, do you want to just get your hundred dollars back and guarantee that you don't lose anything and right. maybe win more? Do you want to do a true hedge, which is basically you're just kind of splitting it in half? You know, and that's just all going to depend on how much risk you have or how much you like your original bet. But basically, the purpose of a hedge is to guarantee that you're winning something. You know, if you've got a seven-team parlay and six legs are in, right. you know, you're going to have, depending on how much you bet on it, you know, you're going to have up to 15 or 20 times your original investment that you can kind of hedge right. to make a little bit of money. And like I said, some people won't do it at all. You know, that's that lottery ticket mentality. Some people will be like, well, I'm going to just double what I originally did. Some yeah. people split it in the middle. And that's all just depending on how much money you want to lock in. But basically, if you when you're hedging your bet, you're just locking in winnings. Right. Go what ahead. he's saying is if you do a $100 parlay and you've won the first five of them, you've got one more game left, and that $100 parlay is going to pay you $1,000. Do you bet 100 on the other team to just get your original bet back, a couple hundred to make money? You know, how, how, where do you want to decide, you know, where, where are you going to make your money? Or not at all, like you said. But basically, I do it. If, I, if I'm uh, standing to win 1000 I bet 100 on the bet, I'll put 100 on the other side. Just make sure I get my money back. Now, but here's the question, too. So, so very good. I appreciate it. Although I had one, one, one uh, uh, listener who said that's as clear as mud. But 
<laughs> well, if you're not, I mean, if, if you're not if, used if you're to not it. a gambler, none of this stuff's going to make sense. Right. And we're trying to break and it down. We're, I'm trying. Yeah. We're totally like said trying to make it as easy as we right. can. Mm-hmm. And if, like I like I said, too, if you're a basic if you have basic knowledge, this will help you. If you don't yeah. have basic knowledge, you got to go way back to the really like not even one on one, but the remedial stuff so you can understand. But but the thing too, the other thing is I have a lot of people and I always argue with my wife on this one, which is, um, Kelly, if you have and I'll ask you this too, Chaz, if you have 20 bucks and it's a regular football weekend, I'm not even talking about Super Bowl. Um, do you take that 20 bucks and try to win a two or three team parlay or do you take that 20 bucks and bet it on one game that you feel really good about? What's the answer to that question? Or is that not the right question? Well, I mean, that that's all pers- I mean, that's all whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, they just want to watch one game. Some people want to watch every game. Some people want that lottery ticket mentality where I want to bet a $20 eight-teamer right. to try to win, you know, a th- couple bucks thousand off, bucks. Off a $20 bet. Some of them are like, I just want to put 20 bucks on this game to get $20 worth of entertainment and maybe win $20. Right. The whole thing about gambling, you should never really look at gambling as you're trying to make money as yep. the number one priority. It should be an entertainment right. thing. You know, it should be your cost of entertainment. Now, if you do it for a long time and, you know, you want to look at it as a way to make money, you know, it's a job. You right. have to put the work into it. Yeah, most you know? people, you hear people talking about, well, I just I threw 20 bucks on a game because it makes it more interesting. Yeah. And that's that's it's, basically the mainstream better mentality. I just want to make the game more interesting, so or, I'm going to throw 20 bucks on or it. Or I want to, you know, like I said, the five-team parlay, the parlay card or something because you just want to pick some stuff and do it. Right. It's You need to look at gambling as the price of entertainment more than anything. That's right. It's, right. Well, we're going to continue this conversation, though. On the other side of this break, we're going to talk uh, a little more about what we were talking about, just gambling and kind of terminology and and what to do. But also, we're going to get into Kelly's prop bets. Uh, I wouldn't say recommendation, just the bets he shared with us. Yeah, don't don't bet these. You're not telling he's, you're not telling people to bet them. You can read it. Uh, join us in the conversation, silverandblacktoday.com. Look for Kelly's story there. We'll step aside when we come back. More on Super Bowl Live, L-I-V. You're listening to the Silver and Black Today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. <laughs>
to silver and black today all right late getting my headphones on for those of you watching us on our video stream up on youtube or on um twitch or on facebook or on periscope uh thanks for joining us here in the studio uh, as we uh roll on on the super bowl sunday want to give a shout out to of course johnny from uh, one nation fanware.com he's on with us hardcore raider thanks for the comments my man we appreciate everybody else uh, on Facebook. Oh, as man, well. Eddie last night. Eddie, yes, Eddie from the Iron Workers here in Las Vegas, one of our one of our best dudes, man. He is he is fantastic Solid. and just you know it, it it's been so much fun getting to know people here and it's getting big. Raider Nation is going to be crazy in Las Vegas, uh, and we appreciate your support. Again, I always I always say it, and I don't I don't just say it to say it. Without all of you out there, we're not here. Yep. So thank you for doing that. All right, we're back to throwing your money away. We're back to gambling on the Super Bowl and on football. And one of the things we did this week, uh, Kelly, up on silverandblacktoday.com, if you don't know, which you should know, uh, you we know. actually started as a website first, went into a podcast, then into the radio show. But if you if you go up on silverandblacktoday.com, the lead story up there, you know, we're, we weren't going to cover Super Bowl with all that stuff because Raider fans, I know, don't really care about both teams. Um, but Kelly did a story on prop bets. Mad props. And and it's it's titled Prop Bets to Help Soothe Raider Nation's Angst Rock because Kelly. because you hate everybody in the game, right? So so Kelly did that. So we're gonna go through that a little bit. So if you're if you're on with us, jump on your phone, your computer, put in silverandblacktoday.com and look at Kelly's story. Okay, Kelly, so here's the thing with the prop bets. This is what makes the Super Bowl so much fun in my view, is you can bet on all kinds of stupid stuff. Some of it offshore and, and some of it here in Las Vegas. There's a lot of it here in Las Vegas at the sports books, and then there's some stuff like the National Anthem, which you wrote about giving up on. That's offshore. So the stuff we talk about now is the stuff you could get in a sports book here in Las Vegas. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and most I purposely likely. did that just for the show and everything. Right. Because you will see all kinds of stuff. And one thing that it just – annoys the hell out of me more than anything especially now that sports betting's kind of getting big across the country with other states opening up you will see people mention the vegas line all the time on stuff you can't bet in las vegas and that annoys the crap right because it's me. not the vegas line yeah it's not yeah that's right it's not a vegas line it's just a gambling line somebody put out yeah it's it's uh it's misleading um and, and they don't have to say for entertainment purposes anymore because now there's gambling all over the place. But, okay, so let's go through this. So, Kelly, one of the things that is always the first prop bet that people think about, uh, as, as random as it is, is the coin flip. And you, <laughs> for you, again, you're not telling people to do this. This is just what you've done. You've taken heads at minus 102. There you go. We talk about the juice. Yeah, it's a... Uh... And with prop bets, there's always fun prop bets you can just do because you kind of want to see them and maybe maybe this weird thing or something like that will happen. Then there's like kind of some serious ones that you can actually handicap and everything like that. The coin toss is a coin toss. I'm just bet – I'm betting it <laughs> Basically because it's any a, other bet, 50-50. Yeah. Well, oh, no, no, none of these other bets are 50-50. No, I know. Yeah. No, no, no. This but one, it's, uh, But, yeah, I'm betting the coin toss because it's a coin toss. I love – I will bet a coin toss pretty much any chance I have. And you don't have to wait to win and, or lose. And I've got a good story I'll tell you guys off the air about a coin toss I bet with Dan Blazarian. I'm sure a lot of people know him. He, he came to the restaurant do. I worked at one night, so we had a coin toss bet. Um, we hang out at the pool together. But, yeah, that's I'm, I'm taking heads this year. Why? Because <laughs> I decided to take heads this year. My whole thing with that's you can yeah we'll but we'll start off and see how the day is gonna go before the game even starts right you know, you know? 
So you're either in a really good mood to start or you're already sassed. <laughs> digging in a hole. You're or already up. digging a hole. Okay. Then you have players with a pass attempt over two and a half yards or two and a half passes, excuse me. Yeah. Plus one thirty. Now this means that a player a random player, not the quarterback, correct? Well it just means it could be. three people three people have, have to, to have to make a pass. A pass attempt. Correct. And I mean the way the Niners have been playing, Garoppolo should throw a pass. <laughs> but I mean that's not guaranteed. <laughs> but you've got the you've got the two quarterbacks. Basically you're just betting that somebody else is gonna throw a pass. It could be a quarterback gets injured, somebody else comes in. It could be a fake play. Right. It could be a punt, you know. And uh I mentioned that um I have a friend that I do a prop contest with, and uh, he gave me pretty good odds that the first touchdown is Devo Samuels throwing a touchdown to Jordan. Oh. Um, if that happens, you'll probably not hear me on the show because I will be on a two month long vacation somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it's basically I just I, it, it's a fun prop. Um, I and then I, I honestly think that either Emmanuel Sanders or Devo Samuels will throw a pass in this game. So I took that plus one thirty. It's yep. just fun. That's a good one. Chaz, you take anything crazy like that? I bet a couple of basketball ones. I got Zion Williams and uh, more points than the uh, both teams combined in the first half. <laughs> I've got Antetokounmpo. That's not a bad one. No, that yeah. first half. I actually he's playing Houston. They, the Antetokounmpo free throws. I almost took that. Yeah, one. I've got the Antetokounmpo yeah. free throws. More more free throws than George Kittle uh, receptions. So a couple of silly basketball ones. So I got a couple of basketball games to watch here at eleven o'clock before the Super Bowl starts. <laughs> you could lose before the game even gets started. Well, no, they, that's that's going to start the thing. Well, so. that'll start the sorry, that'll right. start the process. So I'm, of I'm rooting for Zion to score a bunch, and yep. then I'm rooting for no score in the first half of the Super Bowl, and then I'm rooting for Ant Kumbo to get fouled a lot, a lot. <laughs> well, and and one of the things you know, one of the things you can never really accuse Kelly of usually is being a fanboy, but he loves him some Robbie Gould. <laughs> yeah. of the 49ers and yeah. I, and I and I kid and I'll tell you why in a second but um you know one of the things you can bet on is Robbie Gold Gold Gould whatever you want to call him I can't remember the pronunciation Gould. Gould um is missed field goals and missed extra points right and so with this kicker with the 49ers he was once an automatic guy Kelly but you've gone the other way on him and you think this is a pretty for you in your opinion you think this is a pretty sure bet at least one of them I, I, well, I would miss field goal plus would, one, plus two ninety. I wouldn't say it's a sure bet, but I mean, when I'm getting plus two ninety on a miss field goal, yeah. Which, if they try one over forty yards, it's a better than fifty fifty chance I hit this, and I'm getting plus three dollars on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that, and the extra point at plus five fifty isn't that far from a forty yard field goal, right? So I'm like, I mean, yeah, Robbie Gold's trash now, and everybody <laughs> knows it, but. Kickers are so bad in the NFL. It's not like you can just throw somebody else in there. But I'm basically getting, you know, you know, plus two ninety on a field goal, plus five fifty on an extra point. That's just value. And I hate, I hate using the word value because there's no value if you don't hit your bet. Yeah. But um, I'll take, I'll take that. You know, I'll take that all day and did took them both. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you hit, you hit one of the two, you're golden. You know. You're golden. And you're you're golden. golden. Oh, hey, oh. hey. hey. careful. You're going to hurt somebody out there, Chess. I know. Uh, all right. We'll roll on now with uh, with the Super Bowl bets, the prop bets. Damian Williams receptions, minus one and a half, over the Vegas Golden Knights who played last night, and they scored three goals. Yeah, that empty netter hurt my soul. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, when, I, when I first bet this, I wanted to throw a VGK prop in there. And um, I even put in the article that when I made the bet, I didn't, didn't know who they were playing. But I was like, they've struggled so much lately. I'm like, I'm expecting Williams to get six or seven receptions. Like, I don't see VGK scoring five goals, so I should be good. Right. Well, when it was one nothing in like the second quarter last night, <laughs> I started thinking about it. I was like, if this ends one nothing or two nothing, it's like I can hedge. Or no, actually, I could try to middle my prop by taking under six and a half catches, which is what Damian Williams' number's at. Mm -hmm. So I would have had... Three, four, five, and six. Right. Ah. Or four, five, and six. It's a big middle. To try to middle on those catches. But with the third, the empty netter going in, it cut it down to just two possibilities. So I decided no, I'm not going to try to middle that. But I really wanted to middle a Super Bowl prop just to prove how big of a gambling problem I actually have. <laughs> well, and, and then your next bet, I actually, I actually bet as well. Uh, and that was, I bet it two ways, actually. You have San Francisco plus a, a half a point first quarter only, right? 
Yeah. This is getting into like the kind of the serious props where we can actually do some legitimate have like legitimate reasons and everything for it. The the Chiefs have had a tendency to start off slow in games. And part of that one is because they always defer the kickoff and their defense isn't good. So they're gonna give up a long drive usually, mm-hmm. probably some points. And so they're off, you know, they offense comes out either, you know, behind or after sputtering a little bit. I mean, we saw they were down 24 nothing. We saw they were down to Tennessee. You know, I'm expecting but it's funny though, because both teams, both San Francisco and Kansas City, always defer. So it'll be interesting to see who wins the coin toss, because that's gonna be a big thing for yeah. this prop. Right. Um, but yeah, I just see San Francisco coming out a little sharper because basically they're running the ball. They're just gonna run it down. They're gonna run it down Kansas City's throat until they sacrifice everything to stop the run then Gar- people seem to forget that Garoppolo can throw the football if he well, has you to. know and, and I'm glad you brought that up because if you look at the statistics guys Jimmy Garoppolo and Patrick Mahomes this year I know Mahomes missed some time yardage not very much different touchdowns to interceptions not very much different attempts not very much different yeah, yeah. so people forget like they're they're discounting Jimmy Garoppolo going into this game as a passer, but if you run the ball at 245 yards, I wouldn't throw the ball more than eight yeah. times either. No, yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, when they when they dropped 40 something on the Saints, it wasn't all running the ball. No, exactly. You know? exactly. I mean, that, that's what people need to remember. That's now, right. The the next prop ups when I'm. It's well, one of my and favorites. that's where we tease the audience because we're going to step aside when we come back. We'll finish the prop bets. We'll get some more from Chaz and see what he where he's putting his money. Hey. And we'll get Kelly's Corner as well here on the Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio M40. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We're in conference play, and every game counts. Harris drives through the lane. Euro step left hand shot for the lead is good. Don't miss a single minute on the March Tip Tournament time. Tip follow, no. Battle at the rim. Cruz got it. Nevada wins. Oh. For Nevada Wolfpack basketball in Las Vegas, CBS Sports Radio 1140. Brought to you by Pro Group Management. Stream every game this season through the Radio.com app. Just say with CBS Sports Radio 1140. It's time to get out with the old and in with the. At Philly Chevrolet, we're receiving dozens of new 2020 Chevys daily, and we have huge incentives on the remaining 2019s in stock. Philly Chevrolet at the 215 in South Rainbow, Nevada's number one Chevrolet volume dealer. Find new roads. You're in charge of hiring, and Indeed has solutions, like online skills tests, which let a candidate show that they're the right hire. And we give you this magic music, which will inspire the perfect hire to begin clog dancing. Okay, there's no magic music, but skills tests, that's what this is. See why independent research by Silk Road shows Indeed delivers three times more hires than any other job site. Post your next job at Indeed.com slash hire and try a skills test for free. Terms and conditions apply. Progressive makes bundling easy and affordable. Get a multi-policy discount by combining your car, home, motorcycle, commercial auto, and more. All your protection in one place. Bundle and save at Progressive.com. What's better than watching football? Nothing. And with the Yahoo Sports mobile app, you can be watching the NFL free on your phone. Get live local and primetime games, including the playoffs and Super Bowl 54. Download the Yahoo Sports app now to watch free. A killer could be in your home threatening your family, and you wouldn't even know it. That killer is radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas that gets into homes and increases one's risk of lung cancer. Experts say that proving radon at the EPA action level poses a similar risk to developing lung cancer as smoking about a half a puff of cigarettes a day. You can't see, smell, or taste radon, but with a simple test, radon problems can be detected, then fixed. For information on how to get a free test kit, attend an educational presentation, or to visit an extension or partner office in your area, call 1-888-RADON-10 or visit RadonMD.com. If an elevated level of radon is found, there are ways to reduce it and lower your risk of lung cancer. Call 1-888-RADON-10 or visit RadonMD.com. Sponsored by University of Nevada Reno Extension's Radon Education Program. Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health paid in cooperation with the Nevada Broadcasters Association. In this station. CBS Sports Radio. You found the most in-depth coverage of the silver and black. This is Silver and Black Today. 
Live on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Here's your host, Scott Gobranson. Live and in your face if you're watching us on video. Hello, video world. Where Chaz usually tells me, zoom out, zoom out. Zoom out. Nobody wants to be that close to my face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back here. We're talking Super Bowl bets. We're also going to have Kelly's Corner which he tells me he can do in about five minutes. So we're going to finish our, <laughs> our prop bet discussion because uh, uh, Kelly did a lot of work on this. And I love it. Um, and uh, <laughs> a, a lot of work. He lives it. He lives it every day. <laughs> he does it uh, every day. <laughs> but but we, we left off with some of, with some of Kelly's props, and we're going to get back to those now. And Kelly, this next one is a really interesting one to me, uh, and that was you have uh, Mr. Darwin Thompson. First, first rush. Ready? So the first time he carries the ball in the Super Bowl, the big game, um, to under two and a half yards. Why? Well, first off, he may not see the field. <laughs> um, he's had fumbling issues. But he's got to carry the ball once, right? No. If he doesn't, if he doesn't carry, get any it's yards. An, if he doesn't carry, okay. it's, an, it's an under, which is one of the reasons I like it a little more. Yeah. But also, he's that speed guy, but he has to get in space, and the defensive line of the Niners is good enough to where – he might see the field. He might get two or three carries, yeah. which, I mean, like I said, but the whole thing about if he doesn't see the field at all, it's an under was part of the reason I liked it. I'm not sure how much faith Andy Reid's going to have in him. I could see them lining him up and trying to throw him the ball and try to get him in space. But as far as him just running it, at just, just a straight run, um, I'm taking the under two and a half, and it's one of my favorite props. Mad you, props. You like that one, Chance? Yeah. I mean – He's convincing me over here. It's great. Ready? Chaz is on the app already. He's, he's not paying attention to the show. He's <laughs> Every the time app. he says something, he's like, oh, I got to make a bet. I got to bet Kelly's bet. Yeah. All right. The next one you have was Debo. <laughs> Debo Samuel rushing yards under 17 and a half. Man, I'll tell I, you what. Odds I, makers blow my mind because the data and uh, how they analyze to get to 17 and a half yards. Right. I, I actually brought the prop sheet to show that that's what it is on here because yeah. when I first saw that, I thought it was here, a mistake. Show it, show it to the folks watching. No, I gotta uh, find it. Yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's on here. But Trust him. He, he, it's under a, breakfast. He's a wide receiver. They've got him at seventeen and a half rushing yards. I guarantee <laughs> you. I guarantee you. It. There's an eighteen yard end around yep. in this game by Debo <laughs> Samuel. Well, that's what they're taking Look, into consideration, well, though, right? Yeah, but the offense. Well, no, that's what they are. I mean, it's going to be an end around or something like yeah. that. But. I'll, I'll take under 17 and a half rushing yards for all a wide day, receiver. All day long. My and thing is. If I lose this, I lose it. Whenever, I'm fine. Whenever I see something funny like that, I always go the other way because it's like 100% he's going to have like 30 yards rushing now. Yeah, but a bubble screen is that. If it's behind the line of scrimmage, it's a rush, right? No. If he passes it backwards. If he passes it backwards, that's not a rush. Ah, no. it is. No, I did. What'd you, I, oh, sorry. So, so if I'm a quarterback and I throw a bubble screen. To, to behind Debo, the, behind the line of scrimmage, a backward pass. Well, yeah, but they don't uh, – the Niners, if they are th – they're not doing they – They don't, don't throw, do them. They don't throw the bubble screen to their wideouts that got often. It. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, it – and like I said, it's got to be behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times your screen, your guy's moving up a little bit or something like that. But, I mean, yeah, it's uh, – at under 17 and a half, I'll take it. Yeah, that, yeah that's that seems like – I don't know. You, you always say in the, in the world of gambling, especially sports gaming – to say anything is easy is just not true. Well, what they're going to do just to get to Kelly, they're going right. to throw that behind the back, and then he's going to look like he's going to pass, so Kelly gets his extra pass, George, and then he's going to take off for <laughs> 18 yards. George Kittle's going to be wide open oh. in the end zone, and Debo's going to run it instead of throwing it. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. If that happens, I will punch you in the face next time you, I see you. are killing me. Uh, All right, the I'm other – now. The next one you have is Tevin Coleman under six and a half rushes because the Chiefs don't run the ball, correct? Well, no, it's because he plays for the 49ers. I mean, 49ers, and, excuse uh, me. And he had the shoulder injury. Um, he had the shoulder injury and, in the last he's gonna, game. He's going to play. He wasn't on the injury report. I just don't – I mean, I see him more be, being more used in the passing game than yeah. the rushing game. I'm not – I just don't see how you can keep the ball out of Mostert's hands the way he's no, running no, the he's, ball. he's the story. And he mm -hmm. could take one shot and be out of the game. Right, you know, because I, I don't care who you are, shoulder dislocation, even if it's a minor separation, uh, two weeks coming back, you're going to be tender, and like I said, one shot it could be out or two. I just think that the bulk of the load is going to Moster. All right, and then um, I'm going to skip over. Well, you have you're Kyle. skipping the Kyle's use check. Use check. 
that, I, that, you see, that may be one of my biggest that, bets. Can you imagine having being being intoxicated and having to say his name? You see, it sounds like you're intoxicated saying it, and that we should have asked some of the people last night at the party to, to say it. Okay, over a half reception. Yeah. Um, one reception. If you look at the games that he's been healthy, um, he's been getting – He's Seriously. been getting at least one, if not more, receptions, and, and, and he's had like an 18 yard or a 20 yard. So I mean, he's had some bulk plays. Yeah. If the uh, Chiefs just try to pound the line of scrimmage to stop the run, he's going to be able to leak out. And not only that, but but I I love this one, and I I I'm telling you, he's going to get a touchdown. He's going to get a touchdown in the in the red zone. You watch. Okay, mark my words. Mark, I marked it on the video so we can go back and look at what an idiot I was. All right. Um, now, you're kind of – I called it when we wrote the headline, you're picked to click. It's not really that. But one of the props and one of the players that you really liked, and I actually went with the MVP one that you put on here because I liked it too because what the heck, uh, is McCole Hardman of the Chiefs, right? So you have McCole Hardman. You have, you have uh, a couple uh, props here. Hardman, the first touchdown at 20 to 1 odds. You have that one. Then you had Hardman as MVP. This is the one I put 20 bucks on because <laughs> I'm a big spender. 60 to 1. So let's talk about those first two. Every, well, every year I try to find, like, one player that I look thinks o- undervalued in the props, and this year it was Hardman. Um, if you bet props, you know that McCall Hardman's, like, the poster boy for greatness that can happen because he got two uh, touchdowns in the national championship game, and went, that went off at 200 to 1, and he hit it. So, I mean, everybody who likes props likes Hardman. But for me, uh, I just I, I think he's going to be able to kind of move around. Um, if the, the 49ers are going to – they can't – they play zone all the time. You can't play zone, zone against this right. team exclusively. They no. will light you up. Absolutely. When they go to man, they're going to have to have a safety help Richard Sherman on Tyreek Hill, which means you're going to get one-on-one on Hardman running around. Yeah. There's not a linebacker, safety, or corner on the Niners that can stay with him. You could see some really big chunk plays from yeah. him. Yes. Which so, kind of flows into the next three props. That so I we, we, we do have some breaking news, and then we're going to get to Kelly's corner. Kelly, thank you for the, the prop stuff. It's good stuff. Go read it, silverandblacktoday.com, if you didn't catch all of it on audio. Um, just breaking from Adam Schefter. Schefter. Uh, this it says, Raiders are poised to pursue quarterback Tom Brady. If he doesn't re-sign with the Patriots before free agency begins, league sources tell ESPN. Oh, so that's what the conversation but, was about. Tom so Brady told Mark Davis, hey, put that out there so I can get a little leverage so, on the next contract. So, so I just said there's Tom Brady's not going to be a Raider. Well, then and I'm still sticking by it because I think the Patriots will sign him. But, again, Adam Schefter at this hour is reporting via Twitter, Raiders are poised to pursue quarterback Tom Brady if he doesn't re-sign with the Patriots before free agency begins, league sources have told Mr. Schefter. How's that breaking news when everybody's known that for months? <laughs> right. I mean, that's – I know Schefter's reporting that. Duh. I mean, Well, it's been it, rumored. Now well, he's saying basically he's got concrete sources, which I don't know. I mean, Schefter's – most of those guys are mostly right, but which is pretty good. It's like gambling a little we, bit. We all have concrete sources two months ago. What's the one thing John Gruden loves more than anything? An old over-the-hill quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12, too. Especially. Right. Um, all right. So Kelly's Corner, we're going to turn it over to you now, an abbreviated version, but I don't think it'll take long. And we haven't talked about this. We no, saved it. We saved it for now. And we'll actually, it'll bleed over into the next segment, I'm sure. Oh, I, I can hammer it out real quick. Um, the AP voters are stupid. Um, <laughs> and it's not, tell, not, tell why. not because they picked Kyler Murray to be the rookie, of the offensive rookie of the year. Because you know what? Everybody says it's a quarterback driven league, quarterbacks get everything. That's cool. The the it's just the fact that he won by such a wide margin is what blows me away. And part of that reason is is one, Jacobs had a great season. But also there was a quarterback that had more wins, more touchdowns, half as many interceptions, and just as many passing yards per game. And his name is Gardner Minshew, and he got zero Shoo. zero votes. So you're telling me that Kyler Murray, who had similar stats, more interceptions and less wins, was that much better than Gardner Minshew? No. 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 And it's funny because it came up earlier when I said that the Pepsi Rookie of the Year thing was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You did. Because they picked one person, the Rookie of the Week, every week. Gardner Minshew won it seven times, and at the end of the year, he wasn't in the top four for the Rookie of the Year. He won half of your contest, and he's not in the top four. Would no one else want it more than once? 
we need to re- we need to just like we need to just stop but Kelly, voting on stuff. But yeah. Kelly, because obviously people are morons. And, and this is and this is what's crazy about that is you said you said it's now these are now quarterback awards. So you were yeah. right on that, but now you're saying they chose the wrong quarterback. Well, no, which is cur- well, not saying they no, chose I'm it, not, I'm but not the fact say- that he didn't get a vote. Yeah, it, it's the right. fact that you're putting no all this emphasis, all this emphasis on the quarterback position, saying that the quarterback position is the most important, and you have a guy who had maybe a better year, maybe not. Just I mean, it's close enough. One gets half the votes, one gets zero. Yeah, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Well, and, it, and I said it earlier, I would like to thank the one person who bet for Miles Sanders <laughs> uh, for the rookie of the year. So that 40 to one bet I took on him in the last week of the season doesn't look quite as stupid as it right. did. Well, and the thing is, you know, it, it's a popularity contest, how these voters go. And I know Raider Nation, I even said that Josh Jacobs to me, too, should have been right up there. Yeah. But but but. It, it wasn't going to happen. And is there an ant- is there a bias against the Raiders? I think there is to a certain degree, but at the same time, you can understand it because it is a quarterback league. So I think your point about Minshew is even better. But but I get it. But who cares? Win football games. Yeah. This had nothing to do with Jacobs being a Raider. It has everything to do with nobody cares about the running, running back position anymore. Uh, no, you're right. I, I mean, you're that's, right. That's the whole thing on that. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. And uh, I I think Jacobs was the betting favorite. He was minus yes. two and change the last week of the season. You could have got Kyler Murray at like plus three bucks. A- and a great year. And maybe Max Crosby hmm? Maybe it, they conspired. Hmm. Maybe they conspired. Uh Max Crosby, the fact that he was a finalist was great. And he even said that he said, Look, I just to be even in the conversation was great. And I think that was good enough. That was a huge win for him and the Raiders. Yep. A fourth round draft pick finishing second. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, folks. That's huge. You should and, celebrate that, not be mad about it. And in any other year he probably wins it. But yeah. Bosa I mean, it's you could say what you want. Bosa Bosa's year was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh we're gonna step aside for another break. When we come back, we're not gonna talk about Adam Schefter's breaking news that the Raiders are pursuing Tom Brady if he doesn't re-sign with the Patriots. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl. We're going to give you our picks on the game, who we think is going to win, and then maybe we'll touch a little bit more on the Tom Brady thing. Well, I, I don't know. We'll see. You're listening to The Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140.
on CBS Sports Radio 1140. Welcome back to the home stretch here on Super Bowl Sunday with the Silver and Black today here in, on CBS Sports Radio 1140 in Las Vegas. Today? Oh, boy. Uh, those are um, my two co-hosts, Chaz Osborne <laughs> and Kelly Kreiner. And we're all a little loopy. We were out late last night with the Black Hole yeah. at the Stage Door Casino. Again, thanks to John Viscara and all the folks out there. Check out the videos and the photos we have up there. Good times. It was good times. Um, okay, guys, uh, before we get to our Super Bowl prediction, um, this whole Brady thing, okay, so Adam Schefter puts out a tweet today saying uh, the Raiders are poised. Now, that's an interesting word, too, poised. Riding poised. <laughs> that's the Raiders. Poised to pursue Brady if he doesn't re-sign with the What's that team called again? Patriots. I don't know. Um, and so, so uh, Kelly, your point, it's a good point. That's not really – I said it was breaking news. I, I guess it was breaking that Adam Schefter is putting it out there because he has not had any part of the rumor, if you will. But to your point, it's not really news because we've been talking about it all week. I've been uh, talking about it longer than a week. Yeah. That's, and that's, that was kind of my whole point. It's like, But also, and I made the joke that I'm poised to um, – Try to. I'm poised to go after Scarlett Johansson if her engagement falls apart. You know, <laughs> because I mean, if there's. I told one, my wife that about Kate Beckinsale when she was dating that stupid little guy from Saturday Night Live. Hundred percent. You know exactly. But everybody knows Gruden. I mean, that duh. If he if he's a free agent, Gruden's going to be all over him. Mm-hmm. But you know what? If he's a free agent, so Chicago. So yeah. You know, maybe Jackson. Everybody. I mean, everybody. So, so, well, not everybody, but I mean, if you if sense. you are a team that's close. Right. And needs any kind of quarterback play, right. you're going to go after him. Right. And so, I mean, that that's the thing I would tell you is that I think that um, uh, this doesn't mean much. I mean, look, Tom Brady's going to go wherever he wants, where he's wanted. Uh, that includes New England. So, right. so we'll, we'll see what happens. I have uh, our good friend Ed telling me that um, he thinks Gronk will come out of retirement if Brady comes here, and then he'll have Brady and Gronk. Hmm. I, I, Ed, I don't think so, brother, because you, you have Darren Waller, you have Foster Moreau, and I know the Gronk man in Vegas would be fun to watch because it would be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> but his yeah. last interview he gave, he talks about how he definitely, he goes, I he lost, lost a, he, he goes, I lost a step last season. He goes, you can tell. I, you can just hear kind of in his voice, this is a guy that realizes he mm-hmm. can't play anymore. Yeah, he checked up. Yeah. Well, not yeah. so much that he – it's more physically he he's knows. He's moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physically he knows he can't play, so he's mm-hmm. not going to. Right. Yeah. No, but, and that and that makes sense. I don't think the Raiders – you know, the Tom Brady farewell tour, what's it going to last, a couple more years? Does he want – in his mind, he thinks he's he's still got another Super Bowl or two in him, which he's a competitor, and I agree with him there. You know, everybody should have that mentality, but um, I just don't – like I said, I'll welcome a guy with six championships all day, but I just see his skills declining. And unlike Gronk, he hasn't accepted it yet, and yeah. he's still a top competitor and wants to go out and prove it. Would you agree with what I said though that the Raiders' offense is better than New England's? It, you you mean all the players yeah. as a totality? Yeah, I agree with that. The offensive line for sure. Offensive line's better. Running game's better. Yeah. Wide receivers are better. Tight ends better. Sure. I think like if he does if he does leave New England, I think he looks at this team and he's like, "Yeah, I can do this." And the Bears, you yeah. made those. those yeah, are the, the Bear, top, Yeah, you know, the top two landing spots. If I'm Tom Brady, the Bears and the Raiders. Yeah, the only problem with the Bears got the you know outdoor cold weather. At mm-hmm. least when you're out, you know, out here in Las Vegas, it gets kind of cold at the end of the season. Yeah, it's in the 40s. They're so, playing in a dome. I, I was so, gonna say, yeah. I was gonna say it's uh, so you got that. It's like, meh, we'll be fine. Then you're like, I just meant like living out here in the 40s. That was a joke because he lives right. in uh, Boston. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, you've got, you know, uh, San Diego. You know, Kansas City could be kind of rough. Not San Diego, L.A. Oh, yeah, L.A. Well, they, yeah. Yeah, is their stadium done yet? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we go back to the Kelly. <laughs> the Kelly Clause. Kelly is the Kelly Clause. <laughs> but, no, but here's the deal. Like, yeah, you're right. Everything you said is right. The, the, the Dome, if you're looking at situations, to me, if he doesn't sign in Boston – He's going to probably sign in L.A., and then now if here is a possibility, I don't know. I, again, I don't think it's going to happen, but but to me it makes sense as one of the ticks on his list, including maybe even Miami, although they said Miami not, mm. right, because 
They have they have he, Fitzpatrick. Be, they have two. They're, they're going to have two. He'd be dead uh, by week. They're six. not close. <laughs> that, that's that right. offensive line. They're not close. Yeah. Yeah. I think the top thing he'd be looking for is an offensive line. No, yeah, line. he's not going to go somewhere just to play. Yeah, although that does. Make All right, we got to get guys. We got to get to our Super Bowl picks now. Okay, we're going to start. I'm going to start just because you guys do a lot more research in it because you're betting on it. I don't bet as much on it. Um, I actually think and and save this audio because you can come back and call me crazy. We will. I think I don't think I think the Chiefs are going to win big. No, I thought you were going to say the game was going to end in a tie. No, oh. no, that's no. what I was going to say. I'm not a so- I'm not a <laughs> soccer fan. It's going to be um, a zero zero tie. I, I honestly <laughs> think the Chiefs are going to win big. W- define big over 10 points, 10, 10 to 14 points. I don't think it's going to be as close as people think. I think the 49ers are a good team. I, for whatever reason, I just think the stars have aligned for Andy Reid to finally win his championship, uh, and I think the 49ers might get a little bit, as good as they are, I think they might get a little bit of stage fright. And I don't think they're going to lose because of Jimmy Garoppolo, as I said earlier. That's, that's me, man. That's, that's my take. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Chiefs 27 and the 49ers 14. Oh, we give them hmm. points too. No, I, mean, I just you don't have to. I just, hey, after I all just these playoffs, and you see in the Chiefs down twenty four to nothing, and then ten nothing to the top, and then the way they come back, they just seem like a team of destiny. Just the way everything keep, like you said, the stars lining up. But I can't do it. It's for me. It's a zero. <laughs> it's a zero zero tie. Uh, they're gonna call oh, the game after the first overtime. They're gonna say it was the worst Super Bowl ever. Come they're on. gonna give them all a participation trophy, oh my and they're gosh. gonna bring the Lombardi Trophy here to Las Vegas and just set it up right next to the stadium for us to get next year. <laughs> That's my prediction. No, really. What's wow, your prediction on the game? Mine's gonna look good now. <laughs> no, no go I don't have one. I, I, uh, I'm leaning towards the Niners. I, you know, just uh, I don't ever. I don't think I've seen a team that blocks as well as San Francisco. I mean, you're talking about seven, eight, like all nine guys blocking, just incredible schemes and and um, incredible discipline on that that run game. And, and I'm, you know, I've been saying it. Well, I've been on the show now a year. I defense and running running game and defense wins games, wins championships. So. I got to go with the defense. Uh, I'm going to go with the Niners. I don't so have. You a score agree with Lincoln know. Kennedy? Well, I. But All right, we got a minute and 45 for left. Years. Kelly, if you tell me I'm getting the better coach and the better quarterback, that's usually what I'm going to be on. Mm-hmm. I've I've leaned Niners the last, and every time I want to say, "Oh, the Niners are winning," the Niners are winning. I just think of Mahomes making some great play. I just. I, I'm I'm on the 49ers. I You're think the 49ers. I, I think they win a close one. Um, I'm looking at, you know, probably like 27, 24, which that's four f- four touchdowns and a missed Robbie Gold extra point. <laughs> <laughs> if you were with us earlier, um, you know Ma- what that means. After McCall Hardman has three touchdowns and becomes the second player oh, to boy. win MVP yeah. on a losing team. Yeah. All right. Well, so the game always comes which, down to a couple of stops, right? Yeah. And I feel like the Niners' defense can make those stops. Yeah. So which we have – we go ahead. I'll say it's kind of funny because I just picked against basically every prop. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So we have two for the 49ers. That's Chaz and Kelly, and I have the Chiefs. Kelly Kreiner, thank you. Chaz Osborne, thank you. And thank Fun. all of you for listening to the Silver and Black today. We'll talk to you Tuesday night, Silver and Black tonight, 6 to 7 p.m. And we'll be right back here next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. Uh, Enjoy the Super Bowl, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Take care.